In this video we're going to take a look at isolation valves and how to install one. You often see these installed in pipe work where there are toilets, taps or outside taps etc. These are a means of isolating the tap so that you can work on it without switching off the water to the whole property. There are quite a few different types of isolation valves available. This is a straight 15mm to 15mm compression isolation valve. That is exactly the same, but that is a push fit version. Now, years ago, they used to come with a plastic screw, and the one with the plastic screws in were absolutely terrible because the screw head used to get chewed up. But now they've got a metal component in there, they should be a lot better. That is a service valve that will fit directly onto the water inlet pipe of a toilet, etc., or directly onto a tap. And at that end, that is 15mm compression again. And this one is a 15mm compression on that end, but on that end, it's actually flat faced. And I do have to thank Alan Smith for pointing these out to me. He left a comment in a previous video which told me about these on a website. You can actually get these on eBay. They are a fantastic idea because they are flat on that end and that means that you can connect them directly up to a flexi tail and you get a much better seal than what you would do if you were using a normal isolation valve. So they are an absolutely superb idea. In the past I have actually used a standard isolation valve like that and a tap tail adapter. But obviously if you buy one of these, that saves you using the tap tail adapter which will work out much cheaper. So these are all isolation valves, sometimes called ball or fix valves and sometimes called quarter turn valves. You can actually get these with a little lever on to close them and open them. But they're not a good idea if you have kids because they tend to close them when they are playing etc. So that's the valve in the fully open position and as you can see you can see all the way through that. If you actually look in there you can see that it has like a type of flange that has been pressed in there. That is very important. If you look on the other side that's actually just been machined out and when these are assembled they actually insert the ball and the seal through that part so it's absolutely critical that you fit these the correct way around. And as you can see that has got an arrow on it and that indicates the direction of the flow of water. If you're wondering what this is, that is the actual ball out of the centre of a large two inch valve. So that would be in the valve, it would have a seal around that, maybe PTFE, and the water would flow through there very easily when it's in the open position and then when it's closed that will turn 90 degrees like that. These are often called quarter turn valves because you do only need to turn the ball in the centre a quarter of a turn to be either fully open or fully closed. You can also get these in full bore. The full bore ones do tend to have a slightly larger body. When you're buying isolation valves it pays to look at buying them in bulk. If you buy a pack of two it works out at £4.49 for two or £2.25 per valve but if you buy a pack of 10 like so you can actually pick them up for £8.70 which works out at 87 pence each so you get a massive saving by buying them in bulk. I'm now going to install an isolation valve in this copper pipe on the bench. Normally I do this in situation but it is very difficult to film in situation. So the first thing you need to do is cut your pipe so I'm going to push that into a pipe slice and then I'm just going to give that a few turns. Once you've cut the pipe you then need to deburr it internally and externally. Obviously if your pipe is clipped to a wall etc you may need to pull the pipe forwards out of the clips. So you ensure that the pipe is burr free and I'll do the same on this piece. Once we've deburred both pieces we can then fit the isolation valve. 
It's critical that you install these in the correct orientation, so the arrow needs to be pointing in the direction of floor. So we're going to remove the nut and the olive. You will notice that the olive is copper, and in some countries they call these ferrules. You can get brass ones, but the copper ones are much better in my opinion. When you're making a compression joint, you don't need to use any jointing compound or anything like that, or PTFE tape. You can simply do them dry like this. A lot of people do use jointing compound, but if you check with the manufacturers, it is not recommended. So I'm going to put the nut on there first, and then the olive. And I'm going to push that into the isolation valve. And I'm going to push the nut up, and we're just going to nip that up till it's finger tight. You then need to hold the fitting. So I'm going to do that in a pair of water pump pliers. I'm just going to grip that so that it's nice and tight. And I'm going to take an adjustable spanner. And now that we've got that nipped up, I'm just going to give it about three quarters of a turn. You don't want to go mad when you're doing that because you can actually crush the olive too much but you do need a nice tight watertight seal. Sometimes I just get the compression fitting with the nut and the olive assembled like so and just push that straight in there but for the purpose of the demonstration I will actually remove the nuts. So again we place the nut on first and then the olive, push that into the fitting and then tighten up the nut by hand. We'll then grip that again with the water pump pliers. We'll then take the adjustable again and we'll give that approximately three quarters of a turn. That's how easy it is to fit an isolation valve. Obviously, if you're going to be doing this on a pipe that's already in situ, you will have to drain it down first. If you are installing a push fit isolation valve, it's much easier. All you need to do is push that onto the end of the pipe once it's been deburred. Of course, you do have to get these in the correct way. And as you can see, that one has a directional arrow on it. A common problem with isolation valves when you've isolated them is that sometimes when you turn the water back on they do tend to weep slightly from where the screw is. You can often fix that just by turning it slightly. So if you just turn it a little bit like so, so the slot in the screw is slightly off centre, that can often fix the leak. Or if it doesn't work that way, if you turn it slightly the other way, that can fix the leak. That will have minimal impact on the flow of water. I hope you found this video useful. If you have and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel.